Hey, hello everyone, Pally Tim here. Welcome back to the A through Z playthrough. Hope you guys are doing very well today. Sergeant Hammer was one of the characters that launched with the game, but she's a character that I've never sought out playing. Prior to getting ready for this A through Z episode, I actually believe my Sergeant Hammer was sitting around level 11, level 12. You can go back a few videos and see, I'm sure. She's just never been a character that I've gravitated towards. The move up a little bit, stop, siege, and shoot at anyone inside of your circle has never really done it for me. But back in 2017, on November 29th, Sergeant Hammer did receive a pretty expansive rework. And during that time, a new set of talents emerged for Hammer that didn't exist before. It's focused around her Q ability, her spider minds. Now, I kind of shrugged these talents off. We may have tried it in a game or two, but getting ready for this episode, I wanted to try something different. And what I found was an incredible way of playing Sergeant Hammer that I really haven't seen anyone else do ever. Looking at Sergeant Hammer's stats right now, at least using the last couple of patches because a new one just came out today, but no nothing changed with her. We're looking at a 47.34% win rate, a popularity of only 2.63, and a ban rate of 0.39. That popularity means Sergeant Hammer is literally the least popular character in the game. I've done the research, I've done the homework, and Pulse Detonation Core at level seven has the highest win rate of all of the talents in this tier, but the lowest popularity. If we look at level 13, same thing. Mind talents, highest win rate, but lowest popularity. And the story doesn't change at 20. Highest win rate, lowest popularity. Everyone is sleeping on this. Wake up and watch this video. Editor Pally Time here wanted to add one more thing. I looked through all of the patch notes. This build has never been nerfed and it's actually only been buffed one time. Even the devs are sleeping on this. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we find ourselves on a three lane map for a change. Yay. Uh, friendly team Sergeant Hammer, Anduin, Stitches, Asmodan, and Leoric, the enemy team hooked on Phonix, Li Ming, the elite Tangy Cactus, Falstad, and Uther. Hopefully in today's game, I show you how cool the mine build can be. No more mulligans. No more do-overs. We only had one mulligan. We got fucking stopped. <laughs> Hopefully today is the day. Our Q ability is going to be the main focus of our build, but it takes some time for this to start to really come online. These are the spider mines, and they're pretty fucking boring baseline. You drop mines, they give you some vision of an area, and maybe an enemy walks close enough to that for it to wake up and want to go after them. In most cases, they don't. Uh, these mines can be easily targeted down by characters like Tychus or Tassadar, especially with the beam that branches to multiple targets. Holy crap, that's really bad. Um, but in most cases, we can get some pretty effective coverage of a map with them. The enemy team does have a lot of crowd control, especially with that frontline ETC, and we can just assume that he's going to be coming after me quite a lot, and that's kind of scary. I would like to, if I can, I don't actually know if I can, start this map off with a little bit of siege pressure in the early game. I don't think my mines here will clear out this camp, but if we start placing them early, they have a higher chance to. ETC saw me come down here, so I'm just gonna dip out right away. I'm gonna make it look like I definitely wasn't trying to do this. We can get one more stack of mines down here as well, doing it now before the first stack fades. Push all of these guys into the corner, and that's the baseline mine damage. Like I said, it's not very impressive on its own, but by pushing all of these guys into the corner and then getting into siege mode, I should have probably not hit the one in the middle, we can then splash our damage to the other minions around. The siege mode is our trait. It basically increases our attack range to be anything the blue line can see. And then while we're not in siege mode, okay, while we're not in siege mode, uh, we can see where we'll be able to attack by this kind of staggered, dotted blue line. So starting things off with a little bit of Merc pressure against this enemy team. I don't know where any of them are right now, so sieging here is kind of brave. 
Uh, and I don't have my thrusters either, but we do have an Anduin who pulls me back into his warm embrace. Uh, let's start off with a sippy cup here as well. Uh, the enemy team, just slightly behind us on XP, not that big of a deal at all. We have two different things we could do here. We could go for a regenerative biosteel, which just allows me to heal myself when I auto attack inside of siege form. I like this for general quick match because it just means that I have my own self-sustain kind of built in. Even if it's not the greatest thing, being able to just hold your ground in a lot of cases can be really impactful on Sergeant Hammer. While I was practicing, practicing this character, I went up against so many Li Ming, so many Kalthazad, so many fucking just hard counters to what I'm trying to accomplish. And it, it was really disheartening. But I'm trying really hard, and I'm really excited about this build, and it's the most fun I've had on Hammer in a very, very long time. Phoenix trying to move in here. Let's just siege. We should be able to hit him over the wall just a little bit. Stitches right in there on the front line, creating a lot of space for us. I'm going to siege inside of the objective range, but like only where the minions are. Minions are my main thing. And we're going to continue to put spider mines down as often as we can. I should probably reposition here just a smidgen. Uther trying to run it down. Falstad joining him. Everyone on the enemy team jumping on me. We're going to give myself some armor, put down some more spider mines, and act like none of that just happened. Team is doing a phenomenal job of taking care of me so far. Falstad trying to engage on us. He does land the lightning rod. That's hitting quite hard. Sippy cup down for another 27 seconds. I have found that while playing Hammer, I became the sole focus of my enemies, even if I'm not sieged. Just the threat of Hammer oftentimes is enough to totally sway people into attacking you for really no reason. Uh, I'm going to try to move up and siege here. Pretty aggressive spot, but good damage on Uther might be enough to take him down. He gets away with literally no HP. The Stitches hook able to finish him off. Now, this is where things really start to get fun. Like I said, our minds up to this point have been a little, you know, on the lackluster side. But now our minds will detonate three times instead of just one. So we basically have nine mines down instead of three. I think that's a great way of thinking about it. While we're in siege mode, by the way, these mines can be placed significantly further. It's based on our attack range. So if we want to throw them out further at enemies, we certainly can. Also, by taking that level seven talent, we give ourselves the ability to lower the cooldown on our mines and also return mana to our character whenever we deal damage. Both are very, very strong things. So let's look at a comparison. Like this is the same amount of damage as three cooldown of mines that we did at the beginning of the game. Do you see that? That's just crazy. That's really, really good. And with our self-healing now, we can actually take the damage of this. I just realized I turned Sergeant Hammer into a mercenary camp clear. Oh, that's what I've been doing. Oh. That's why I've been having fun. Fuck. Someone left a comment a little while ago, and it's just like, every episode of the A through Z so far has just been Pally talking about taking camps. And I was like, I don't think that's true. That doesn't sound right. And here I am, turning a ranged auto attacker into a merc camp taker. All right. All right, I'll just live with that. I'll live, I'll live with knowing that. Uh, we do clear them very quickly though, and those are gonna start to push in towards our enemy team. Another great thing about this mine build is we can use these mines for a little bit of vision inside areas like this, for instance, where if, you know, that, not a good example, maybe that one was a good example, where we want to see more of what's going on, so we could just drop that there. We are going to take the Napalm Strike in this game, and I have never really been a fan of this ability in the past. That's how much I've changed over the last week playing this character. Napalm Strike just allows us to basically deal auto attack damage to a wide area, but then have a burn over time that's left on the ground. The impact of this is only 243 damage, which is less than I think our auto attack does at the moment but you can weave it in with everything that you're doing. And look at this damage here. Look, 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 look. 
That was mines and my napalm and a couple auto attacks. Just completely annihilated that entire wave. I've been dual soaking on Sergeant Hammer on maps like Black Hearts Bay, on maps like Tomb of the Spider Queen, and there's fucking nothing they can do about it. I'm just gonna put my mines down in the back of that lane, totally safely, 148 damage per explosion of those mines. Beautiful, just, just beautiful, just beautiful. Also with this playstyle, you can be a lot more mobile than what Sergeant Hammers may traditionally lean towards. Let's just put some mines in that fog and then she can't hide from us. We're gonna go into siege mode as Li Ming is walking up. We can uh, just barely get out of range of ETC as he goes to dive in. ETC does have mosh pit. We need to be very, very aware of that. My sippy cup on cooldown for one minute here. Let's get him off his mount. Napalm in his bush too, just to get some vision of what he's trying to do. And that worked out really well as we picked up a nice hook. Ooh, uh-oh. Ooh, uh-oh. Uh, Ossifer, I swear when I took that corner, uh, the party just came out of nowhere. Unfortunately, just the tip of my tank being put into that mosh pit. And what did I tell you? Every time someone has an opportunity to focus hammer, they're gonna do it. That planet cracker, that was on me. The objective is coming up here pretty soon. Friendly team about a half a level ahead on XP at the moment. Uh, we do see Falstad giving our Leoric a little bit of a run for his money. Both teams are alive and I'm thrusting my way up here. Uh, let's just send a napalm out on this guy. Mine's here as well. I'm just gonna start the objective. Kind of force them out of our building, let our team recoup a little bit. Uh, I'm not going to be able to do too very much here. But we can pop our armor to mitigate a lot of the damage from Falstan. Siege so we can hit ETC here. Napalm on him. Pretty good. Okay, moving up. We're now going to plant ourselves right here and start to AoE. Mines everywhere we can get them as often as we can get them out. I might be able to have slightly more aggressive siege positioning here, actually. I wish I had mine set up for that. That would be so fun, actually. Okay, now that Li Ming's dead, I'm gonna move up pretty aggressively. Mine's on Uther because I want all of those minions in front of him. And we're gonna get a phenomenal talent. This is going to allow us to like double our mine output on a cooldown. Think of it as like burst damage. Moving while thrusters are active leaves a trail of up to five spider mines. Additionally, increase the slow of spider mines by 15%. Let me show you what this looks like now because I just get better at taking fucking mercenary camps Which is apparently the only thing I care about now You put your minds down then you just kind of spin in a circle over here put a napalm push everyone into the same corner <laughs> and It's just instant It's just so fast Oh, man. Let's do that again. oh. Napalm on the lane. We put some mines on it. Where's the lane go? There is no lane. We can push this out a little bit more. Our team's doing a great job of moving in with the objective, actually picking up a kill on Li Ming during the process, too. Hold on. Hold on, guys. Mine. Mine. Napalm. It's beautiful. It's fucking beautiful. It's, it's gorgeous. I've never seen anyone do this, ever. Do this was so off my radar. I had no idea it existed. We have teammates here, so we don't need the sprint. We'll just put the napalm down. We could blast all these guys into the corner as well. So just taking over that camp. Now, the downside to this is I feel like I really have to save my sprint cooldown for the mine activation. Uh, which is weird. So like in team fights, I may not have my sprint to save myself. I'll use my sprint to initiate. That definitely takes some fucking getting used to. Uh, we clear another camp at the top of the screen. This one takes a little bit longer. That's totally fine. We're gonna pick up Giant Killer here. So all of our auto attacks do percentage damage. I believe this one's unique to Hammer. No, it's not. It's not. I thought there was additional benefit from being in siege mode. There's not. Just the increased range. As we're rotating around the map, if we don't know where the enemies are, we just leave mines everywhere we go. We can napalm on that wall, auto attack this wall, remove enemy team sight lines. If we think they're gonna rotate in on me here, 
mine that way. False head in the lane beneath us, although I don't have my most important cooldown for a few more seconds. Napalm the wave to follow up Asmodan, although his clear is looking excellent. Three members of the enemy team pushing top lane at the moment. Wow, we actually have a lot of lane clear on this team. I didn't realize that. Looks like this fight is continuing above us, but I have to do just the slow, steady march toward it. Uh, ETC looking like he was about to get in siege mode there. We're going to try to chase these guys to cut them off with some mines on the path. We caught up to Uther. Is it going to be enough? Siege mode takes him down. Let's go uh, give ourselves a little bit of armor here as we're trying to siege into the enemy team's base. Mines on top of Lee Ming. is like, oh, fucking Lee Ming hits so hard, bro. And look at that, a fucking raw dog ult for no reason. I'm just walking through the map and we still get ulted. Phoenix being forced back a little bit. Uh, I'm just trying to make it back to a sippy cup, which is off cooldown. I should be able to heal up really nicely. And wouldn't you know, my internal timer never fucking turns off, boys. We're back just in time to do it all over again. The objective is active, or it will be in 30 seconds. So having these out and pushing can be good. Although my timing's a little off, actually. We probably should delay just a little bit. Probably should delay just a little bit. Moving down to the bottom lane now. More mines on this location. Just leave them in there. This will be pushing during the objective, which can be very strong. We have a three level lead on the enemy team right now, but they are going to be on the same talent tier in just a moment. And I'm going to save my sprint for the upcoming team fight. I think I'm going to need it there. Uh, everyone on the enemy team currently missing ETC on the point, Lee Ming way back in lane. We can move in. Ballstat hit me with the lightning rod. I'm just trying to get out of range a little bit. Hopefully interrupting the teleport there. That gorge looking pretty good. I'm going to get in siege mode. Napalm is down and that's enough to take him down. However, I am caught inside of the mosh pit at the moment. Anduin walking up, making us immune to damage at the same time. Mine's down in the bush. Napalm on the objective. I'm going to get in siege mode here and just hit whatever I can. Unfortunately, they pushed me back right away. Uh, very aggressive siege mode this time because we have the numbers advantage, I believe, in my team. Mine's down in the bush so we can see through it. Mine's now hitting Uther extremely hard, taking him down. We replace those mines on the other side. <laughs> yeah, this is what it's about, dude. This is what it's fucking about, dude. This, to me, and I mean, I guess I'm catering it towards the Merc Camp thing. I genuinely didn't realize that until this this recording. This, to me, has been the most fun I've ever had on Sergeant Hammer. On maps like uh, Tomb of the Spider Queen, where you can literally get people to follow you down long hallways in the dark, <laughs> leaving mines down in their path the entire time is so fucking fun. If Stitches gets a really good hook, literally what we could do is just sprint around in a circle on Stitches. Knock him back into the mines there. Back in Siege so we can get resets. Mine again. Mine again. Uther stunned in the mines. Down. Napalm. <laughs> just short, just fucking short, dude. Just fucking short. Now at level 20, shrapnel mines. Our mines are now going to reduce. Oh, I didn't even show you the building burst damage. Holy shit, look at this. Look at that shit. Look at this being melted. 211 damage from each mine, and we can put down eight that all explode three times. It's fucked, dude. It's actually fucked. It's so nuts, actually. Um, let's see if we can rotate back over to the middle lane. We have a good Merc Camp pushing here. One Napalm on the wave should clear it. Get in siege mode. This allows us to put mines down right at the base of the building. And this should literally just be melted. Like a hot knife through butter. Okay. Now we get map superiority. Unfortunately, I can't sprint to do that. But I can sprint. Oh, uh, I won't even need to sprint here with only a single target. Phoenix kind of moving this way. Lee Ming kind of moving this way. I'm going to napalm one more time. Falstead does know we're here, but fuck him. Sprint in a circle. Mines. Ah! No, 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 no. Don't come to me, Falstead. Don't come to me. How are those mines doing? Uther evaporated, dude. 
Knock him back into him. <laughs> Fuck yes, dude. Fuck yes. Come on. Fuck on. And then like this, this really, I think I could take this with this low health. Thank you, Anduin. So yeah, this took a lot of practice. This did this didn't come naturally. I played, I want to say like 20 fucking games of Sergeant Hammer over the weekend. Really trying to get used to this. But I'm so fucking happy with the result, and I hope you guys have enjoyed the ride that this game offers. It doesn't work in every game. Uh, you know, last game we just got completely overwhelmed. And a lot of it just comes down to your team fighting inside of Hammer's range. That can be a little weird, especially depending on what your team comp is. But we have a ton of map pressure at the moment. The enemy team's core is gone. And that is going to be a GG. <sighs> the fact that our team was able to run the map while I was just getting mercenary camps was really, really valuable. Sergeant, or excuse me, Asmodan really opened up the map a lot for me. 12 mercenary captures and they all took about 12 seconds total to take. Talents I went for in today's video. Ambush at level one, regenerative biosteel at level four. Ambush is so like I can sit in stealth by a mercenary cam. That's it. <laughs> uh, pulse detonation core. Wow, that's a lot of syllables at level seven. Napalm strike into tactical mine deployment, giant killer and shrapnel mines at level 20. Do not sleep on Mine Sergeant Hammer. It is super duper good. Super duper good. Oh, I was too, 120 damage short from being our highest damage dealer too. Oof, so close.